God damn it, it's Wednesday and I'm willing to wait for it. Wait for what? Wait for the market to pick up? Too late. It already has. And that means there's tons more money sloshing around. That means hackers are going to be going, give it to me. And that is why we're talking about Lossless today, the first DeFi hack mitigation tool for token creators. They have just announced the 2.245 million private sale round. And look at the people who are invested. Downmaker, Master Ventures, X21, Hacken, Chandler Song and Ryan Fang, founders of Anchor and Bands. So there are some people investing in this thing. But what is it? What does it do? That will be the subject of today's first look. But first, a message from our sponsor. We all know the feeling of paying high fees and waiting for transactions to confirm with interacting with DeFi. Well, no more. Solana has built a fast censorship resistant blockchain where you can build and use crypto apps that scale today. The network supports thousands of transactions per second with fees less than a cent and over 500 validators. To learn more, head on over to solana.com forward slash define to get started building and join its rapidly expanding community. And if you want to learn more, we did a huge film all about Solana just a few weeks back. Now, back to our first look. So lossless, what is it and what does it do? Well, at its most basic, it's a piece of code that gets inserted into a token smart contract and it allows the founders to freeze the contract. And that means that when a hack happens, you can freeze the account, you can freeze where the money is going and, where, and stop a hack from happening. And then there's a second stage to this, which is a, it's where the, the team looks at the fraud, looks at the hack and decides whether there has in fact been a hack and then there's a completion process where the stolen funds are returned and whoever spotted the hack is then rewarded for it. So imagine, I mean, there's been a lot of hacks recently. And if we look, I mean, the, the, I found this article which picked up some of the biggest ones. There was uh, the Alpha Homora $37 million hack. There was, I forget which one was the biggest one, but there have been a few. And of course, just recently, the bunny hack, which no one seems to be able to give a full figure to. But if I, you know, some people were saying it was a billion dollars, it, it wasn't. Um, there was a $200 million flash loan exploit. But yeah, basically, it was a big one. And as we see more and more forks happen and more and more sophisticated hacks happening on the likes of Binance Smart Chain, thanks to flash loans. But yeah, there's going to be more hacks. If there's more money sloshing around, there's more hacks. So, so Lossless is designed to mitigate that. Now, I went through the white paper, which you can find here, to kind of try and figure out what this is. But essentially, it's this. You have LLS, LSS tokens, which is their native token. Users of the, the protocol can stake those tokens uh, depending on the confidence they have that a hack is taking place. So. Um, 24 to 48 hours after a hack has taken place, anyone can freeze the account the money was taken from. So they can freeze a wallet, and that would allow the team to then move to phase two, which is where they will then evaluate what has happened. So if we look in their solution section, they talk about a two-step process. So there's the first step, which is the urgent instant freezing after a hack. This step is community and technology-based, rewarding the one who identifies the hack and freezes the transaction. This means that anybody can be a hack spotter. Anybody can hunt for hacks that might be happening, hunt for suspicious activity, and execute that freeze. But they have to be pretty confident that this is going to be rewarded in the long run. Otherwise, you lose your token. So there's this staking on the confidence of what you found. Um, there's a So it's a proof-of-stake hack-finding platform. And then the second stage is that um, the losses team then reviews the frozen address to determine whether it's valid or not. If, it, if the hack is indeed valid, further steps are taken and hopefully the, the funds will be recovered. And then the finder is rewarded a fee. We'll go into how much that fee is later on. And if not, the staked tokens of the finder are confiscated, the address is unfrozen. So effectively, it's like if, I was worried that this might introduce a culture in which people were too proactive in freezing accounts, because it's quite easy to call foul when perhaps there isn't a foul. So the staking mechanism is designed to make it financially a little bit tricky for someone to, uh, to actually freeze an account. Otherwise, you just get anybody freezing accounts um, out of spite, for instance. So that's very interesting. And how do they make money off this? Well. Uh, if we go further down, you can see 
that there is a business model. So they get an estimated 7% P fee, 7% P, 7% fee paid from the stopped hack transaction, of which 2% is paid out to the finder, 2% is distributed for LSS token holders that stake, and then 2% is distributed for the losses committee and 1% is retained by a losses company. So there is a there's room for them to make money off this. I was actually wondering if you were able to retroactively add this code into smart contracts that already exist. So I've literally just, as recording this video, got a reply to that in the Telegram channel. So what does Maurice say? Maurice says, there's a couple of ways an existing project can integrate losses. First is doing the migration to a new contract and losses will provide the tools to do that seamlessly. And the second way to do it will be for the users to wrap their tokens, just like wrapped ETH or wrapped BTC. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting because migrating a token to another contract is a pain in the butt, to be honest, um, because you always get people who don't see that that needs to happen and miss out. But wrapping a token, that could be interesting. So it's adding this additional layer of security to a token as part of a wrapper. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So they give the example of uh, the paid network here, which was hacked. And then they say a time difference of four minutes and 10 seconds between the mint and the first sell transaction. Uh, that could have resulted in a 67% selling reduction. So I guess what they're saying here is they're providing these tools for people to detect hacks, but what they're looking for is for people, for, for bot owners to start kind of competitively um, competing for these fees. Same with arbitrage or liquidation bots, that kind of thing. So hack finders um, to make the process of finding hacks and defeating hackers much more competitive and much more valuable. And the idea, I guess, being that being, making it much more profitable to be a white hack will result in better outcomes for all. We shall have to see whether that is indeed the case. But I thought it was fascinating because we just see, we're going to see so many more hacks and it always feels like the hackers have this immense advantage over everybody else just in terms of the um, the insight they have into a protocol and the ability they have to read f for flaws in the code. But if we can have a system that's sort of designed as a first offense like this, um, that would be pretty interesting. But again, you do worry that it could be deployed incorrectly. Um, but if the, you know, for someone who has their account frozen, if it's only a 24 hour freeze, maybe that isn't so bad. So we want to see how that um, evaluation process happens. And there's a few different stakeholders that need to come in um, who would decide whether a hack was indeed a hack or not. So that's lossless. I'm curious to see how that's going to work in practice. And of course, from their point of view, they want people to hack so they can demonstrate that the process actually works. And of course, we need hacks to happen in order for smart contracts to become more robust. It's just part of the growth process. So that's Lossless. If you have something you would like me to take a first look at, please do leave a comment below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your week. This was The Defiant. Check us out on Telegram. Check us out on YouTube. That's it. I don't know how to do these sign-offs. I'm a YouTuber. I'm not really. See ya.